Hi, everybody, and welcome to another Extreme Performance Series video blog edition. Uh, we were chatting GPUs, and I think that's an interesting space. And when we're talking about that, I wanted to bring another one of our uh, performance engineering peers uh, to the table with us here. Uh, joining me today is Hari, and Hari's working uh, alongside of a, a group of folks doing some GPU stuff. And so, Hari, give yourself an introduction and let everybody know what you're doing within the team. Hi, I'm a performance engineer with about 25 years experience in industry. I've been working on GPUs for about 17 odd years now. I'm primarily interested in two aspects of GPUs. One is in demonstrating that VMware vSphere with virtualized GPUs is an ideal platform to run ML AI. And the second aspect that I'm interested in is in using ML AI to solve problems within VMware's own uh, software stack. So these are my two areas of interest. Thank you, Mark. Hey, well, that's awesome because I think, you know, what's interesting, we can all talk about what we should be doing and practices and things like that. Uh, but I, I think an interesting aspect uh, you're going to talk about today is how we're using it, right? And it's that idea of, look, if we're using it, it's got to be good for everybody because the, we're, we're the inventors of it and we're consuming it as well. So uh, what do you have to share with us today, Harry? Well, I have a couple of points that I do want to share with you. The first of this, as Mark pointed out, is I want to tell you how we use it in-house. And we do so because it's the best environment for ML AI. And that's why we recommend it to you. We've tried it. We know it's good. And that's why we recommend it to you. And the second aspect is I wanted to show you a bunch of data that we have that will help you choose the best mode of configuring your vGPU for your particular workload. So I want to talk you through these two items today. Well, that sounds great. Uh, let's share out some data and start from there. I'll begin by showing you with the aid of a couple of simple examples how we at VMware use NVIDIA vGP on vSphere for ML AI that we run in-house. And then I'll present some data that will help you select the best vGP mode for your particular workload. So from a first example, we have a convolutional neural net here that we built in-house to detect whether or not an image is blurred. The blue rectangles with the rounded edges are convolutional filters, and we have three convolutional layers interspersed with max pool layers, which feed into three fully connected layers. And these feed into a sigmoid activation function. To use this model, you feed in an image from the left, run it through the model, and it classifies it either as a blurred or a not blurred image. This is what might be considered a small model. It's got only nine layers. We train this using NVIDIA vGPU on VMware vSphere. Training time is roughly about two hours using an Ampere GPU. We configured it in A140C profile. And the training data sets about a million images. A second example of a model that we built is this one here. This is about half the model. And what this model does is it takes a pair of images as input and it tells you if one of them is a blurred version of the other. Once again, there's a convolutional neural net model with four layers. It's got four max pool layers interspersed between the convolutional layers, which then feed into three fully connected layers. The output of the fully connected layer on the right is an n-dimensional vector. And to use this model, you just double it up. And so sometimes people call this a Siamese network. And the n-dimensional vectors from the fully connected layers are fed into a difference layer, which calculates a vector difference and then feeds it to a sigmoid activation function. To use this model, you feed in a pair of images from the left. The model does its thing. And then it says whether or not the pair is a blurred version one or the other, or if they're two completely unrelated images. This is what we would consider a medium-sized model. It's got 13 layers. We trained this using NVIDIA vGPU on VMware vSphere. It took about 12 hours to train using an Ampere GPU, and we used an A140C profile. Just to give you an idea, if you did this on a CPU, it would take you about eight and a half days. And that's an estimate because after one day, I killed the training on the CPU. I was just too, I didn't want to wait that long. And the training data set has about 3 million images here. Now, the point that I'm trying to make with all these examples really is this. NVIDIA vGPU on vSphere is an outstanding high performance environment for ML AI. And we're not saying this simply because we are the people who created this. We're not saying this because the benchmark data that Uday is going to present to you will show that virtualized GPUs are near bare metal performance. We say this because we use this environment in-house. 
we don't always do ML AI, but when we do, we choose to use NVIDIA VGP on vSphere because it's the best solution for ML AI. We've used it in-house. We know where the pain points are and we've removed them. We know where things that bother you or might be there, we've removed them. So that's why we recommend it to you because it's the best environment and we want you to use it for your ML AI. So Hari, I think that's really interesting. I think what's important to re highlight what you were just saying here is the fact that the performance we've looked at and measured and benchmark has really been thoroughly thought through because we've heard ourselves trying to do this, right? So like you said, it's the idea that we're using it, we've optimized it now, and that's why we can hand it out so confidently to everybody else at that point, right? Exactly. That's why, because our experience tells us that it's good. Awesome. Moving on to looking at data to help you select the best vGPU mode for your workloads. NVIDIA vGPU on vSphere can be configured in two different modes. One is the vGPU mode and the second is the MIG mode. When you share a GPU among multiple VMs running on a single GPU, the memory on the GPU is always statically partitioned. No matter what mode you choose, memory is always statically partitioned. But on the other hand, the CUDA cores are time shared when you use a vGPU mode, whereas in the MIG mode, they're statically partitioned. So the difference between these two modes for a vGPU, which is vGPU mode and MIG mode, arises from how the CUDA cores are partitioned or shared. And this has a, a tremendous impact on the performance that you'll see on your workload. So it's important to choose the right mode for your workload and to help you do that, we ran three different experiments. In the first experiment, we ran the test, which I've shown here. What this test does is we've interspersed CUDA data transfers with CUDA kernel execution in this test. Typically, when a CUDA application executes, what it does is it transfers data from CPU memory to GPU, runs some CUDA kernels on it, and then transfers the results back to CPU. So there's data transfer and there's CUDA computation. And in this test, what we've done is we've interspersed the data transfers with the CUDA computation. And as you can see, the latency of transfers is not hidden behind the computation. For our computational kernel, we chose matrix multiply because if you look at most ML AI workloads, they do matrix matrix or matrix vector operations and matrix multiply is representative of that. So that's the kernel we chose. In this particular test, we tried different combinations of of data transfer to computational load and the results that are shown in the graph here. This graph shows on the y-axis the normalized runtime. Lower runtimes are better. The x-axis shows the number of VMs that can currently share a single GPU. Since MIG mode supports at most seven VMs on a single GPU, the graph ends with seven VMs. The blue lines show you the vGPU data. The red line shows you the MIG mode data. In this test, the data transfers are interspersed with the CUDA computations. And in such, for such a workload, vGPU gives you the best performance across the board. But that's one type of workload. Let's take a look at a second type here. In this workload, what we did was we consolidated all the data transfers and we get those done first. And then we do the CUDA computation. So the data transfers are segregated from the CUDA computations. And remember, we don't hide the latency of the transfers behind the computation. We tested this with different combinations of loads for data transfer and computation. And the results that are shown here. The graph once again shows you the normalized training runtime on the y-axis. The x-axis shows you the number of VMs per GPU. Of course, as I've explained, the, since make mode supports up to seven VMs per GPU, we should have seven on the x-axis, but I wanted to zoom in. So I truncated the graph with just four VMs. Over here, the results are a bit nuanced. The red line shows you the make mode data. The blue line shows you the vGPU data. So for this kind of workload, where the data transfers are segregated from the computation, make mode gives you the best performance when you have less than three VMs. When you have more than three VMs, vGPU gives you the best performance. Now let's look at a third kind of workload. Over here, we just set up the data in GPU memory and we executed CUDA kernels intensely. So the bulk of the execution time or the runtime is dominated by CUDA computation. Another way of doing this would have been to 
hide the latency of the CUDA data transfer behind the computation. That is what happens with ML training. So this is what you'd see with ML training. And when you run this particular workload, the results that are shown here, once again, the y-axis on this graph shows you the normalized runtime. Lower runtimes are always better. The x-axis shows you the number of VMs on a single GPU that goes up to a maximum of seven. The red line shows you the performance of MIG mode, and the blue line shows you the performance of eGPU. Clearly, MIG mode has the best performance across the board when the bulk of your computation time is the bulk of your execution time is dominated by com CUDA computational kernels. Or if you successfully hide the data transfer time behind the CUDA computation, and that's what happens in ML training. So let's summarize all this with this table over here. This table shows you with those little blue rectangles that show you where MIG mode gives you the best performance and the green rectangle shows you where vGPU gives you the best performance. But what I really wanna do is take a step back from this table and kind of give you an intuition for it. If you have a workload like ML training where the data transfer latencies are hidden behind computation or the bulk of your execution is dominated by CUDA kernel execution, MIG mode gives you the best performance, choose MIG mode. Or, if you can segregate data transfer and computation, and you can, you have less than three VMs per GPU, you want to use MIG mode. For every other scenario, you should be using vGPU mode. You bring some great points here, which is the practical application of configuration, right? And it's great to see that our team try all these different scenarios, help provide that guidance to our customers again by eating kind of our own dog food that way. And so uh, appreciate you bringing that uh, to the for forefront here today, Hari. Thank you so much for joining us and uh, stay tuned everybody for the next edition of the Extreme Performance Series video blog edition. Cheers.